I'm Sarah Poff, the multimedia storyteller, and I'm here to tell you another story. Now, this one's going to be about Georgia O'Keeffe. Well, am I telling her story, or am we painting? Are we painting a painting? We're painting a painting about her. We call this just Georgia, and so we're going to make big flower blossoms like Georgia, just Georgia. All right. I'm going to show you some samples. Now, if you were going to do something like this with um, a child, this might be you put a stencil on there and then do some in the background of uh, them doing uh, blotches, maybe from a small sponge or a paintbrush. Now, this one's also a really fun way to do some of the Georgia flowers, and that is you take a marker and you color the lines, the outside lines of it, and then you take water and you pull the color in so it looks watercolor-like. That was how this one was done, and this is colored pencils in the background. The only difference is this is watercolor paper, and this one is a different kind of, it's a poster board. You can see some of those effects. That's a really fun way to do it. I just like to show varieties when we did it. Now this is um, one that's done with, you've heard me, if you've listened to some of my others, you've heard me talk about tempera cakes. This one was actually done with tempera cakes. And this is done on a old piece of illustration board. Sometimes people give me things like that and then just crayons in the back. And so just the tempera cakes. This one is another one of those that's done with the uh, markers and the watercolors. This one is another version that was done on a, on a cardboard kind of piece. Yes, see, I used it in the classroom. It's got some of the Georgia information on it. This one was done with a spoon. Now, Georgia liked to paint all types of flowers. And I like to paint flowers, too. And I just wanted to do that with you today. All right, so this is one that uh, I painted not too long ago. Now I painted it on that one on watercolor. Today I'm going to do acrylic. That one's on watercolor. Uh, we're going to do something similar to this one, except this time I'm going to choose acrylic. But as you see, I've talked about it in other videos, talk about it in this video. Of uh, A lot of the skills can be... Um, you know, the same, the same skill can then go on to some of the other kinds of paper. Watercolor, we know, is a little bit of different, but the paper, different papers, the different types of paint, you can use a lot of the skills and transfer them forward. All right, I've been painting quite a bit today, so you see some of my supplies already around with paint on them. Now, on this one, I like to uh, cut out a shape. Um, so, you know, choose what shape you want to do. Draw it. Draw it on there. Maybe, maybe you want to do one more rounded. However you want to do, you could even you can even do circles if you want. You know, this is this is kind of what you want to do on it. I I don't know. I think I might want this one instead of the other one I did. Hmm. Let me think. Ah, nah. I'm just gonna go with this one. That looks more like my sample did. All right. Now what I want to do is I want a circle in the middle. I want a circle type shape. I think I'll do this. It's got my water in it, but I think I can pour my water over. I may have to pour it back in a minute, but we got it over for now. And then I'm going to look for my pencil. Here's my pencil. Pencil got buried in my paint. Just one of those days. You know, have you painted it? Have you painted all day long? Someday I, some days I have days that I just paint all day long. All day long is what I do. Now, I'm going to just start thinking about how that's going to look. I think with the good quality of light I have coming in, I don't need to do it with a Sharpie. I think that'll, that'll be good. So I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to go around with this petal. I'm going to draw, but I, I want them to overlap a bit. So they're not always going to be the same. It's the same shape, but we're not going to draw it all. We're going to overlap, and then we're going to just see part of that. See how I just see part of that? And I don't want to draw the point down in here. So especially if you're working with some children on this painting, you're going to make you're going to make you want to make some guidance there so that they. 
they understand that part because they'll want to draw it in there. So see, I don't want to draw the line clear down. I want to leave that so that I, uh, I can paint over it, but some colors, depending on what color I might choose, it might not, uh, you know, I might have to give it a couple of coats to go on top of that. So I'd rather just do it the other way. All right. Now, what's your favorite color? Are you going to make this your favorite color? Or are you going to paint it a different color? What color do you think? I like yellow in the middle. That's, I don't know, there's a lot of flowers that have yellow in the middle, and I just kind of like yellow in the middle. So that's what we're going to go for. I have some yellow here on my, on my paper. I have some water in my jar. Some of my paint's been sitting just a little bit, so I had to water it back up. Now, I like to paint pretty dry when we're painting this. That is an awfully bright yellow for the center of a flower. I'm going to add a white to that. Just kind of calm it down a bit. You know, George O'Keefe was one of those women who just brought the name of women painters to the forefront. And uh, it's nice to be able to teach about, to about her so that the girls have a, an artist they can go, oh, it is a lady. It is a lady that did that, not just men. A lady did that. All right. Hmm, I still can't decide. What, what color is your flower going to be? Uh, um, I, I really like red, but I'm not in the red mood today, I don't think. I think mine's going to have to be different today. You do see I have a flower on my finger. Yes. I found that at the thrift store. One of my favorite places to buy jewelry. Got to keep some paper towels around because you never know when you're going to get paint on you. What kind of mood did I say I was in? Oh, well, I got out red. So I think it just might have to be red. Hmm. Let's see. Or who knows? Well, let's just watch how this goes. We might just mix some colors here as we go. I'm going to go around on the lines that I drew. I'm going to go around and I'm going to paint those red and then I'm going to add I'm going to add in some other color as I go. Maybe this hoping that a little bit of red on the edge We'll give it a little bit of depth. Because the main thing is that we want to get this done in about an hour. That's, that's our goal with these. These are similar to a paint and sip class. So you're trying to do it in an hour. Maybe you want to like have a little party at your house and, uh, and do this together. And I use the um, just canvas boards. I, I just go to one of those local cheap places and get it. If you want to do it on a regular canvas, you could do that. You could also, um, I do some of them, as you saw when I went through my little stack, some of them are on um, illustration board, some of them are on poster board. I just choose, you know, whatever I have available. I go for it. I like to paint and 
I'm, I like to experiment and see what can be done on different types of material. Somebody gave me some um, wood out of a piano a while back from a piano that's about, well, it'll be over 100 years old. And I was thinking the other day, I need to see what I can paint on that. Now, this wood is really, really light. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what I can create. Creating is the fun part. The fun part is just the creation step. Get in there and try out something different or new. I really like how Georgia went in and, you know, you don't see the whole flower. You just see the enlargement of the flower. So I'm dipping. Let's see if I can move my plate over so you can see. I'm double dipping. I'm dipping into white and I'm dipping into red. Just kind of pulling the paint together. Dipping, dipping into water, I don't want a lot of water, but sometimes a little bit like that helps, especially if um, where your painting is a little bit dry. The, there's a dryness in the room. I'm going to add a little white in the middle here. I'm going to blend out some of that red. I want it to be there, but I don't want it to be super predominant as a line. I want it to just give us a little depth in it. Sometimes that can be accomplished a little bit more, too, with a red and green a complementary. I go back through here and I just add a little bit of that on top of it. Just kind of blend it down in there. It takes a, a bit of blending to make that happen. But this painting is a little bit simpler in how many details we have on it, so we can take a little bit more time to, um, to do something like that. Blend, 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 blend. We're making it look pretty blended. Just picking up some of those old habits from teaching. Okay, I'm getting into the red some, doing more of the pink. And you see, I don't stir up the whole thing. You don't want to stir up the whole thing because you don't know what you might or might not want from that color. 
you don't you might not want to use all of it a really light or a really dark pink and so you just kind of you know add a little bit in along the way there I want to work on the truck next. white in there in the middle. See, and then you go on top of that one again, so you have to then go back in. Oh, there's green over here. I try to use my paint up. I don't, I try not to just Keep squirting and keep squirting it out. Try to be concerned. Not worry about that much. Just like the fact that I've, I've uh, widened these up just a little bit. If you follow me in other ones, or if this is your first time, if this is your first time, welcome. Oh, some of the other people may have heard me more than once on describing some of the things. This painting takes a little bit more. Sometimes it takes a while to concentration on some areas than some of the others that I've done. I, I just use the uh, big acrylics, the craft acrylics for the most part. Sometimes I'll buy like like blue, some colors like that. They don't, the crafts don't do as good with. You can make it happen with that. It just doesn't quite, they, they sometimes sneak a little extra or something in it. I think uh, a lot of times in blue there's a little, at least my eye says there's a little too much purple in the craft blues and maybe that's just me you know it, it um it might not really be it might just be me thinking that because different different people's eyes perceive a little different on some of those things today. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm getting getting ready for spring. And this one's called Here's Come Spring. Right now this is a little more pink. So red. I'll look for but it's still, you know, based out of because pink's really just a tint of red. Okay, I don't want quite that much. Had a little bit more of the other one. spring colors, and, and in some places there you could see my pencil line. I think. Well, I hope you're enjoying this class, and I hope you appreciate. Um, the great library system we have with Mid-Continent Public Library and all the different types of programmings that they have. I know I've learned to really enjoy over the years. I enjoyed it when, uh, when I first moved to Blue Springs. I was so excited to have a big library and I would go check out a whole big stack of, of books. <laughs> Too many. I taught preschool at the time in Blue Springs and I I, uh, I just wanted to check out that book because it was about what we were talking about or what we are getting ready to talk about. And then I'd forget to take them back and my husband would go, well, can't you just like check out a few and then take them back on time? And, and I was like, but there's too many books. There's too many books. You know, I had a bookmobile when I was a kid and a little bitty, then eventually we got a library, but it's a little bitty old library. And I felt like I was in a, 
and a candy store. It was kind of like going to the best candy store you could ever imagine, except this candy store had books in it. And so I just couldn't, I couldn't stop checking out those books. I just paid the fine and took the books back and got some more. <laughs> just kind of how I handled that. Um, but um, I, I didn't go for a, a few years. I taught, taught school, and there was a library at school, and there was a library at church and different places. And when the kids were older, I didn't go as much. But then uh, as I was getting ready to retire, I had heard that they were doing programs, and I was like, oh, I, maybe I could do some when I retire. So I started contacting them and then started working on going uh, to take out programs, art programs out into the different branches, art and crafts. And doggone, I found out how cool the system was. You know, how, how they were having all these programs. And I found out I wanted to go to some of those programs. You know, there's, check out, check out the website. There's all kinds of fun programs. It doesn't matter what you want to learn. There's something out there that, that can be for you. Um, so make sure, and if you don't, if you can't find what you're looking for on the site, make sure you ask one of your local library ladies or gentlemen to help you out with that. And uh, get in there and have some fun with it. I uh, actually uh, found out uh, at the Woodneath branch that they had a storytelling classes going. And so I was able to um, start going up there and taking those classes. And eventually I was able to uh, get a storytelling certificate. So now I have fun telling stories and painting. <laughs> Just added another, another item to my list. So just see what I'm doing. I'm adding just a little bit red into the white. A little bit of red into the white. Going over the red that I put down first. And I'm going to come back in in a minute with some of that green. Because I'm trying to define the lines this time. Which is something to remember when you're doing some of the other paintings. If you want to add more to them. Um, to use that complementary color that complementary color of whatever color you're, you're doing to go back in there and define the outline of those items. It's a softer line. It's, you can get it a little more rounded looking, a, real, a little more realistic looking that way. And you don't need a lot black black harshens the whatever it is you're painting it makes it look a, has a harsh color whereas this gives it a little bit more shade in there i have been known to use brown that same kind of way sometimes but most art teachers will tell you to use the complementary color If you don't remember that or didn't have an opportunity to learn that, just go out and Google it, and you'll find you'll find information about that. If you like painting, you know when you do these classes with me, you like painting. Well, then just go out and and keep learning more. You know, do the same. I found out that these these artists guys and gals. They do the same painting multiple times. And usually the ones we see are the ones that they did after they learned to be good at it. If you go back to their studio and their works, you find other versions of, of that one you saw that was famous. Just kind of how it works. <laughs> now, I always laughed it with my kids at school about someday I was going to be rich and famous, and there's one little boy, huh, he used to pop up and say, now Mrs. Poff, we've had you for a teacher for a long time now. He was kindergarten. He'd had me all year long. And he said, you aren't rich, and you aren't famous, and it's the end of the year. <laughs> oh my. 
Yes, he's way up in his 20s now. <laughs> Serving our country. In the military, yes he is. Now my granddaughter, however, she, I, I told her that same kind of thing that you don't, you know, you're not rich and famous. I'm not rich and famous anymore. And, you know, the, I don't know, they'll probably just have a bonfire with all my, my paintings when I, when I'm gone. And, and a granddaughter told me that she was going to take all my paintings to her house and she was going to set up a museum for me. That she, you don't become, she told me, she's like, you don't become famous until you're dead. She's like, I'll take care of it for you, Grandma. When you're gone, we, we can do this. And I said, okay, you got to talk to your mom and your uncle about that. I'll be gone, so I guess. And I said, you have to talk to your daddy, too, because you might need a place to store this stuff. <laughs> well, I want it all. I want it all. Don't you give it to somebody else, Grandma. <laughs> At least it makes me feel good. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to complete a painting. I want you to feel, you know, step back from it. Go, oh, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. Because I will tell you, I'm one of those people who have failed more times in my life than most people. People will look at my success and go, well, you've succeeded a lot. Well, yes, now, now. But I, yes, it took me a really long time to get to this point. I tried a really long time to be able to get a job as a teacher. I taught all different kinds of things, but as a public school teacher, it took a long time for me to get there. But then I love doing all kinds of teaching, just like now. Just like now, this is fun. And I like it when you write me little messages. Now what's happening with that is because my paint is a little dry. So I've got those little pieces on there. which that happens in a different kind of way sometimes uh, when you're doing it on paper and you rub the paper too much. Maybe what I need to do, I'm gonna just wipe out my brush and I'm gonna get me a new little spot of paint. I think I can just come up here and do it and just not rub it off on the side. So I've got plenty of paint. It's just where I'm rubbing it. So sometimes those things happen and you have to work through them. It's not what happens in life, it's you pursuing and keeping going. Maybe you want to have a paint party. Learn how to do this. This one's pretty easy. Pretty uh, versified in the fact how you can make the petals. You can make a series of these. And if you do what I did and you went to the those really cheap stores and you bought the canvas, just the, you know, the cardboard canvas. If you just buy the cardboard canvas, you could have a whole wall of different colors, of different little paintings of flowers. Kind of a fun summer, spring on your wall would be a, a cheap update, especially if you already have your basic acrylic that you didn't have to buy. And just buy, you know, buy red, yellow, blue. Start with that, red, yellow, blue, black and white. And you can make the other colors if you don't know how. If I'm not, you know, you, you I can tell you now, but if you forget and you need, just, just you know, Google it. Just, Go to YouTube and find something that tells you, or go to another internet source if you have. You don't have to go to a certain one. But brown, you mix all the red, yellow, blue together for brown. Now, you, you kind of have to like massage it a bit to get a good brown to do that. 
That's why sometimes I buy brown if I'm going to use it a lot. And then um, all the other colors you can mix. Just, you know, just mix them. Red, yellow, blue, black, and white is all you really need. And then we talked about how I'm using the complementary color on here to add the add a little bit of definition in. So maybe sometime when you're out, out and about, there's some flowers around. Just take a moment and kind of look at the blossoms. It could be a, you know, a blossom in a tree. It could be a flower. Just kind of, kind of look at them and go, oh, oh, look at more detail of it, and see what you can learn about the, the shading part. And then, of course, the best thing you can do is just keep practicing. Keep practicing with color, different ways of doing it. Experiment with that complementary color. And see what I'm doing? I'm going back and then I'm adding a little red to the edges again. I'm just kind of layering it in there. layering it in. And of course any any kind of petal for your flower, it works. It's up to you. It's about you being happy with what you choose. And then you got to stand back a little bit and kind of look at it once in a while. See how, how it's looking. Sometimes I need a little bit of a neck stretch when I'm seeing how it looks. For my personal use, not for the, the looking at my flower. especially if it's one of those days I've done a lot. I don't know about you, but I'm really getting into this blending and seeing what it looks like. I remember the cat, the college professor, I'd say remember. If this is your first time to watch, you don't remember what I've said before, but some people out there might. Um, the college professor always said, stand back, stand back, stand the way you back, and see what it looks like. See what those people are going to see from across the room. What are they going to see? Are they going to want to come up and look at your painting? Or are they going to bypass it? And how you get them to look at it is have interesting areas all over. Have something that really catches their eye. So the, the painting, the artwork is divided into the thirds. The thirds this way thirds this way and where those thirds intersect that's where you want one of your centers of interest you want the main center of interest on one of those then you want to have additional center a center of interest that's the you know sub the sub center of interest so you have one you want one that you want them to for sure see and then you want to and then you want to guide their eye around they guide their eye around the painting. Make them want to look at 
the different sections. That's just learning some of the theory of art. There are theories behind art just like there are behind some other things that we do in life. You want balance, you want you like some of the color balance around, but yet we need some variety. And the white and the red lines add some of that in. And I'm trying to look up here, look up from tall up to see how it's looking. Does it, you know, have some of those aspects in it? And some of that needs to be almost with a dry brush. I want to brush out some of the red. And then I want to go back to a really dry brush and add some in the middle there. When you do these quick paintings, you work with a drier brush. It's, it's more about filling in the space and um, keeping it fairly dry. And sometimes you add a little too much. It's about working with it and making it what it should be. So I need a little more red in there. Even if this dries, you know, something happens and you have to leave and it dries and you don't have it quite like you want, you can always go and repaint that section again. It is a little bit, to me, it's a little bit harder once once you quit and you leave, it's a little bit harder to come back and get your mindset going and if your paint dries up to, um, to get those same kind of colorings going again. At least it's, it's that way for me. Okay, I'm taking a moment to look from up here. Of course, my view is through a camera right now. So you can uh, hopefully step across, set it up someplace if you're not doing it on a tripod and um, or paint easel and step back from it. I tried that one time, painting with the video shooting, and the paint just started doing this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When you're like shooting in front of the camera, you don't want to do that on an easel. It's uh, not so fun. You live and learn. Okay, I need this because I want to try to put a little bit Line. You name it, it and if, if it's wrong, I've probably done that version. A lot of things I've watched by helping and learning from other people that I'm trying to teach. You know how they talk about the teacher learns the most? Mm, yes, I'd say that's pretty, pretty accurate. I keep trying to do that. I keep wanting to use up that paint up there. Not a good idea. It has blue in it. So you can you can tell I'm a, a quite thrifty person. Still, I think I maybe need to go on and do something else for a little bit with this because I'm still not like satisfied with how this part looks right there. So maybe I just need to move on then come back in a few and do it because I need to do 
these areas. Okay. And I don't want a bright blue behind there. I want just a little subtle sky kind of blue. Now I can put my paintbrush up here. It'll be all right. It has the color I want. Well, sometimes you need to probably, I should probably do this more than I do. It's always kind of test. Now if your paint is painting is wet like mine, you want to turn it around. We're working on the blue areas. That's what we're going to work on, a few sky areas that we see there. And we want enough for it to be a contrast, but not like really, really dark. And if we saw more of this and we were doing this kind of, of class, we would uh, paint this first. But since we just have just a few areas, I'm just going to do them this way. And I do want to turn my canvas each time. But see how much that just brings out the, the painting. Uh, there's just something about the background I've been trying to teach. I was always trying to teach that at school. And the people I'm around now, I try to teach that is you need something back there. You need something in the background that allows your, whatever your artwork is to pop. And white doesn't do it very good. You can tell that I made one darker than the other a little bit. Of course, we know the sky has different textures in it, too. Different textures, different colors as the clouds ripple through. get a little bit more white here. I was talking about how I use the basic colors. Well, one thing, it's a lot cheaper to buy those great big containers and um, use out of them than it is to buy the small ones. Plus, I, I like being able to mix my own colors and to come up with the blends I want. It's easier to blend if you just, you know, get some practice in doing that. There's not a lot of this blue to do like that. That's why we do it the other way. When there's a lot of spots to fill. I'm 
sometimes it's like a paint like a house when you're painting your house if you do the strokes too heavy you can see the brush strokes a lot I think I'm going to just add a little bit right here just because I think that's going to help my my movement around as I talked about the movement around the painting when somebody's looking at the painting. Okay, we've got one little spot over here. It looks like I touched it with green at some point. It so happens. I actually uh, got a bunch of white on my top today. One reason I like to wear black is because as one of my fellow teachers told me, she reminded me one time when I was in there and, and uh, I had paint on me. She's like, black is so forgiving. Just get a permanent marker. So that's, that's what we did. She helped me get that going. So now I, th I have a clean, dry sponge. See how this one's a little bit damp. I think I'm going to choose the one that I just rinsed out that's a teeny bit damp because I want it to be a little more textured. Like I said, I don't like seeing those lines. So I'm going to come over here to my paint and I'm going to try to get a mixture of paint. And I'm going to want to, I want to do that just to kind of give it that little bit of sky-like feeling. Hey, learn how to make this painting and then make a, make one for your friends for their birthday. Use their favorite color and uh, save the money from those cards. More fun and more personal. I, I kind of dodge on that sometimes because I go, I don't know if they'll like it if I do something like that. Well, I've done some paintings for some people at my work when there was a shower when there was a birthday when we were getting together to do something and you know some of those ladies actually cried brought tears to their eyes that they could have something personally done by me I was like whoa okay maybe I do need to do this more you know sometimes we who like to do these things just kind of take it for granted that you know we don't do it as good as they would like and we get kind of down on ourselves that way well, maybe we shouldn't. And maybe I'm preaching to myself as much as you. If the paint's wet and you put your hand on it, yes, that happens. <laughs> that happens. When we're trying to do one fast, sometimes it happens more often than, than when you're trying when you're doing it slow. But I don't know about you, I like to do it fast because sometimes I don't find time to get back to it. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't find the time to get back to it. And so that's why we want to do these fast. And we want to do it, you know, in that one hour time frame. And I like it because you can come and do this anytime you want since it's online. It's not like you have to do it at a certain time. You might want a paint party. Just have a little paint party. 
Don't forget to sign it and date it. Okay. All right, so I need to do a little bit here in the middle. Hmm. I think I'll do a little bit of green. I think that's a good choice. I think I want to have a, a stenciling kind of look on it. So I'm just going to look for a, some brush that maybe it didn't get washed out as good as it should. Um, I might want to like do this yellow over because then that way it'll kind of blend a little bit better instead of having a spot there that's not blending well. Well, I sure am glad that you have taken this little journey with me today on this painting and I hope you enjoyed it doing it and maybe enjoyed enough to share on your uh, social media accounts that forward to somebody and reach out to a uh, mid-continent and uh, show your appreciation for them uh, having classes like this okay now I'm just going to take and put on the end of my brush. So we're kind of going to be doing what I sometimes refer to as I'm printing my brush. So I'm just going to do the little little marks like that. Because I want it to be yellow, but I want it to have some texture on it. Have a little green texture on top. And maybe somebody out there likes a certain kind of flower, wants to research it and try to make it look more like, you know, a real flower. When I'm doing something like this, I have more of an artistic version. Just doing what I think's fun. And I try hard with my samples not to make them super hard to follow to just make it simple and complex instead of complex kind of do that like I used to at school I don't want to make it so hard that I make somebody look so hard to do that it makes somebody not want to do it because it's about you getting in having fun um, learning wanting to do it again, finding uh, one lady told us on one of the virtual ones I did, she, she talked about how that was her little moment of, of peace and away from the family. She just had gone into another room in the house and was able to, um, to just have a little release and have some fun. And that's what I hope that this does for you and that you enjoy that. Now, of course, you could have painted these little edges like that. You could put leaves there if you wanted. You could have made it, you know, you could make the it smaller. You saw on some of the other samples. And if you want to be reminded of that, you once this is posted, you can go back and uh, see the first part of it and see other ways that this can be done. I This is one I really like in the watercolor version also. I'm not as much a watercolor person as, as some other people are, but you do have to be careful when you've got a lot of paint on there. Sometimes it's easy to uh, get where you've double dipped before. We're so close, I hate to get out more paint at this point, but I'm I'm working, I'm massaging it. Also, if I get out a lot of paint, I'm concerned that I'll get it too dark instead of that light green like I, 
I have going right now. Okay. Maybe I want to do, let's see, I want to see what this looks like. Just a little bit like this. And maybe you're one of those more scientific types and you want to draw some of those other little pieces that we know would be in there. Okay, and the fun thing about this one is you can put it any direction. These also look, look good if you uh, do them in a square. I think just a teeny bit of uh, just a teeny bit of white on here, and then I think I'll be about done. I'm gonna put a stenciling brush just barely. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do by hand because I it won't show up on that white paper. I just want to do just, just a little. Trying to make the petals look a little more delicate. Certainly something I couldn't have done in the classroom without having a whole bunch of children copying me. But we have oil in our skin. The acrylic sits on the top. It'll be easy to wash off. Paper towels are great. See, and then you try to even when you when you do something like that, then you're going like, like, well, I need to even this, I need to even that. How do I get that going? Okay, now you want to stand back and look at it. You want to always remember to like have a little signature on there. And I think that's about a wrap on this one. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed following me today on this painting. And uh, as we uh, honor Georgia O'Keeffe with our Just Georgia, so glad that we have uh, all different kinds of artists to learn from. So this is Sarah Poff, and that's a wrap for today.